I'm Carrie from Nacogdoches, Texas, and I'm a professional cook. I'm Erica from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a professional cook. I'm Angela from Pound Ridge, New York, and I'm a professional cook. I'm Nick from Red Bank, New Jersey, and I'm a professional cook. As if two of these ding-dongs are lying. Can you help me spot the cons? How's everything going? Everybody doing good? I'm in the zone, guys. Now that the vegetables are in the oven, next I'm going to get started on my meat. Getting my pan ready for my lamb because my style is farm to table fresh. I love to use fresh herbs. So I'm gonna cook the lamb with just garlic, rosemary, and thyme. I love seeing the herbs yes. in Angela's cast iron yes. skillets with that lamb, but look at the way Angela has overcrowded that cast iron pan with lamb chops. I'm worried that she's gonna cool off the pan and not get the sear she needs. Amateur move. Got my shallots going. Next, I'm making my reduction, and I'm only gonna work with the apple cider secret ingredients because I know that I could make it work with tart cherry juice. Cider's in. And just give me that perfect combination of the sweet, savory, it's just delicious. Nothing better than that. Angela is building out an insane, delicious agridolce sauce that she's gonna glaze the whole thing with. It is going to be a delicious, delicious bite. That is a pro move. I, I disagree with you completely. I think that's a tribute to great home cooks everywhere. There's so much ingenuity in American kitchens. And I think Angela is not a professional, but I think it's a great move. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands yes. up. Woo! Step away Good from the job, guys. Great job, everybody. OK, Angela. Today, chefs, I made for you pan-seared lamb with confetti fingerling potatoes, mini Brussels sprouts, and cranberries in an apple cider cherry reduction. I was worried that you were going to overcook the lamb chops, but you definitely did not. They're beautifully cooked, and the way this looks on the plate with the, the sprinkle of herbs, it, when it landed, I thought, wow, this looks like a fresh garden. But I got a couple of thyme sprigs that are too big to eat and too woody and stemmy. This is a real meal. It felt very holiday and celebratory. Lots of color on the plate, lots of interesting textures. And that bright tartness that your sauce had is fantastic. That said, I almost broke a tooth on the cranberry. Sorry. Cooks and cons, I gave you 30 minutes to make an amazing rack of lamb using holiday drinks. The winner of the first round is Angela. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm just so happy. Round one, Angie baby. We loved that shallot sauce. We thought that every part of it was balanced beautifully. It had a nice acidity. It was a complete plate that we really enjoyed. Thank you so much. Angela, well done. Thank you, Jeffrey. Angela, we're trying to dethrone you right now. No way. Not happening, kids. Got to maintain the crown. Oh my gosh, breakfast to my family is the best way to start ringing in the holiday cheer. So what better than to serve a fabulous holiday breakfast? For round two, I'll be making brioche French toast with apple compote and crispy ham. Lots of butter going on this one. First thing I'm going to do is get started on my apple compote. Nothing better than warm apples on Christmas morning. I want my organic farm fresh apples to be the soft, gooey, apple pie type of consistency. Then I'll be adding my overized Jeffries. Adding a little bit of the round ginger cookies so we get that nice ginger flavor. Everybody's coming to my house for Christmas breakfast. Now I'm moving on to my ham. I really want to get it nice and crisp. Some of it's a little toasted. Look at the ham, it's burnt. Right. That's, that's like severely burned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe she wants a char on her ham. Sometimes a controlled char is the most delicious thing you can have. Literally running circles around you guys right now. I don't right. think so. <laughs> now that my apple compote and crispy ham are done, next I'm going to get started on my French toast. Yummy, delicious brioche. It's a chef mood to cut the pieces nice and thick like that. But she's making these huge, thick slices that I don't think they're going to have time to soak up any of her custard. 
It's important to use a really good brioche bread. Good bread, good custard, that's the key. Looking good, perfection. Those you. look delicious. I hope you're coming for Christmas Why are you breakfast. I am, I'm coming for Ooh. breakfast. Ooh. I'm frying them up in the pan, they're looking good. And I know my brother would have loved the French toast dish that I'm making. He would have said to me, yo dude, this is the kind of stuff I love to eat. He always called me dude. He never called me Angela, never. I think it's so interesting that all three of them are taking on something sweet-oriented. Interesting. Look what she's doing. She's put her bread on corners. Very, very pro. That's a chef -y move. Ho, ho, ho. Cooks and con. You gave me a beautiful dish of your choice using holiday classics. They all looked very festive, but only one person is going to win the cash. Angela. I made brioche French toast with crispy ginger cookies and apple compote. We've got the ginger Jeffries in the batter, and we also have ground Jeffries sprinkled on the crispy ham. It's like I've been cremated and poured all over your dish. <laughs> Did you want the ham to cook this much? Yeah, I wanted it extra crispy because I wanted that mix of texture. I mean, it's pretty fair to say that that's burnt. And it's my favorite thing about the dish. <laughs> I say by burnt, you mean awesome. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do mean awesome. This is really delicious. It's buttery. There's a salty, smoky, hammy note, and just a hint of bitterness that really counteracts the enormous amount of sweetness that there is on the rest of this plate, as do the cranberries. But I will say that the whole thing looks like an exploded French toast. It's a little messy. I don't know whether you needed to go this bananas with the way you plated it. It is so wonderfully sweet and salty. Your use of the gingerbread was thoughtful and unique in the custard and then dusted on top to remind us of its texture. Interestingly, the French toast is the thing that falls the f most flat for me, and I think it is because you had these great big thick slices of brioche that didn't have time to soak up as much of the custard as you would have ideally if you'd had more time. Angela, are you a cook or are you a con? I am a cook. Come on! Oh. Yes, you oh. are. Where do you work? I'm executive chef in my restaurant in New Canaan, Connecticut. You own your own restaurant? It's all farm to table and uh, so much fun. I own Baldanza Cafe with my husband and my son, Alex. So what can I get for you today? What could be more rewarding than to be in business with my husband and my son, working together to be successful and creating beautiful dishes together? The best part about being a chef is that you can share your love of food and feed people and make them happy with beautiful farm-to-table food. So now's the time for me to reveal the winner. If Erica or Angela have won, you've gotten $10,000. You, sir, if you have won, $15,000. Are we ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> We're Let's ready. Go. All right. The winner is... Angela. Yes, yes I did it. <laughs> yes, I did it, and I'm so excited. I owe it all to my brother. This one's for you, Anthony. Angela, we thought your plate was creative and full of energy, very celebratory, perfect for this festive season, and also that crispy ham. You really hit it out of the park. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Angela. You have won $10,000 and beat some really stiff competition. Well, there you have it. In the wonderful world of cooks versus cons, the battle rages on, and today, a cook brought it home. We'll see you next time. Good job. Thank you. 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 Thank you.